Alcohol can be something that many of us have a complicated relationship with, especially if you're an athlete or an active individual. For me personally, I love to have a drink here and there, but I absolutely hate the way it makes my body feel the next day or the next days following, even plural. And especially when it comes to like my physical activity and physical training, I can definitely see how it affects my body after drinking as far as my muscle fatigue, my brain fatigue and brain fog that I get, um, all those things. But it wasn't until recently that I noticed drinking alcohol was affecting my body in a different way that I didn't really notice or wasn't tuned into before. And it really took me taking some time off from drinking more frequently to drinking much, much less. And again, I wasn't like binge drinking or anything before drinking anything, um, any amount significantly. I was having maybe three drinks a week, if that, uh, now decreased to one or zero times a week throughout these past, let's say three months or so. So, you know, not a huge decrease, but enough for me to actually notice some differences in my body, which is interesting. And the thing that I noticed is that my joints are actually just feeling better. And it's hard to describe like the better feeling I'm having, but they are feeling just healthier. Like they're moving better. They're recovering better after workouts that are stressing them significantly and like doing a sport or jumping a lot in volleyball or things that would previously really irritate my knees and especially the knee that I've had ACL surgery on after, you know, repetitive days of really hard activity. I'm recovering a lot faster than I'm used to recovering as far as my capacity for my joints to handle that kind of load. And I'm not saying that alcohol is an isolated event. There's probably other things going on. It's darker here in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm probably getting a little bit more sleep. According to my WHOOP, that is accurate. So there are other things that are factoring into this, of course. But the important thing is it led me down this research rabbit hole of trying to understand the correlation between alcohol and joint health. And I found some interesting things that I wanted to share with you guys especially since a lot of you guys on my channel are here to learn about how to improve your joint health or you've gone through knee surgery or some sort of joint surgery and are looking at ways to really um, amplify how you can speed up that recovery or you know just have healthy joints in the long run. But before I dive into all the cool stuff that I learned, I wanted to share a few words from today's sponsor. As the weather gets colder, I start to have less and less motivation to make it to the gym. And that's why I've been spending some time building a home gym here in my apartment so that I can work out whenever I want to. One of my newest additions to my home gym has been the Merak S26 indoor cycling bike. It's truly the perfect bike for a home gym because it's really compact yet packs a punch with a hundred levels of smooth and quiet resistance. You can even track your workout progress hands-free on their LC display as you ride through scenic courses and take professional coaching classes and even get to play fun games on the free Merak app. And if you're like me, when we're talking about bikes, comfort is really important, which is why I really love their super padded seat that's adjustable as well as their dual bottle holders that can keep you comfortable during longer cardio sessions. And if you have a smaller space like I do, it's really important to have equipment that moves around easily that you can store elsewhere, which is great because this bike has wheels on it, which makes it really easy to move around and store away once you're done. If you're looking to just get some low impact exercise in, during the winter time to get your body moving, this is a great option. As we all know, cycling is gentler on the joints compared to higher impact activities like running while still providing a really effective workout. So if you're looking to add a piece of cardio equipment to your home gym without breaking the bank or taking up too much space like a giant treadmill, this is an awesome option for you. And as a special thank you to you guys, you can use the code here on the screen for a discount on your order. Click the link below in the description to grab yours today. And thank you to Merak for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so here are three ways that I found that drinking less alcohol throughout the week helps with your joint health. And I mean, probably with your health overall too, because alcohol is not super great for you. So number one, drinking less alcohol will decrease the chances of having inflammation in the joints. Consuming alcohol has been shown to increase joint inflammation through several key mechanisms. One of those mechanisms is that alcohol can affect the gut lining and make it more permeable and allow endotoxins to enter into your bloodstream. These endotoxins then trigger this cascade release of a variety of different cytokines that are inflammatory, like TNF-alpha, interleukin-1 beta, and finally, interleukin-6 that circulate in the body systemically. These cytokines in particular mediate joint inflammation, which can exacerbate conditions like arthritis. Key mechanism number two in which alcohol can increase inflammation in the body. So heavy or chronic drinking in particular can activate these cells in the liver called Kupfer cells. And those Kupfer cells can also start to release those same cytokines like TNF-alpha that I mentioned earlier, which can lead to more of that joint inflammation response. The third key mechanism by which alcohol starts to increase inflammation in the body is by 
by way of oxidative stress caused by its byproducts when broken down by your metabolism. These byproducts being acetaldehyde and reactive oxygen species, these byproducts on their own also start to release these pro-inflammatory messages that release more inflammatory molecules like those cytokines, so back into that same kind of cycle. You guys are starting to see the full picture now, right? So you combine all these mechanisms and you get like a whole hot mess of inflammation attacking not only your joint tissues, but all tissues of the body for the most part, but when we're talking about certain inflammatory cytokines that mediate joint inflammation, it's gonna affect your joints. Therefore, drinking less alcohol equals less of these mechanisms happening in the body, which means happier joints. So the second way that drinking less alcohol helps the joints out is by preserving cartilage. So drinking alcohol actually inhibits the proper absorption of certain bone preserving minerals like magnesium and calcium. And without the proper mineralization for the cartilage, the cartilage starts to lose its density and its resilience. So therefore drinking less alcohol allows your body to better absorb those minerals and deploy them to nourishing the cartilage as it needs to and all that good stuff. Another way that drinking less alcohol actually helps the joints and its cartilage in particular is that it allows for more healthy lubrication to occur in the joint. Alcohol, as we all know, is naturally dehydrating. It's a diuretic, so therefore we end up ridding ourselves of more water, I guess to put it politely. We end up peeing more. And you can probably guess less hydration in the body means less capacity for the joints to be lubricated well enough to prevent cartilage degradation over time. So stay hydrated and lubricate those joints, Chicago. And the other way that alcohol impacts your cartilage is that drinking alcohol can impede your body's cellular processes that cartilage really needs for that turnover and to produce new healthy cartilage and for injury repair. Therefore, less drinking equals better cellular turnover equals better cartilage. Pretty simple math if you ask me. Okay, the third and last way that drinking less alcohol can actually have a positive impact on your joint health in particular is that it can help to shed the pounds when you stop drinking alcohol. Now, I was actually just watching a video that Abby Sharp did on this and she was covering over Jaclyn Hill's weight loss that she's had after stopping drinking. And I hear about that a lot when people stop drinking. I work with clients who stop drinking and I see that happen where weight just starts to fall off effortlessly after they've tried to lose weight significantly significantly before that. And if you are somebody that is carrying extra weight and you are drinking a fair amount, decreasing your alcohol consumption can allow you to lose weight much more easily and take more pressure off of your joints, especially when we're talking about the low back, the hips, the knees. And I don't need to go into like why alcohol leads to weight gain you know, we all are pretty familiar with that being like empty calories and it increasing our hunger levels and decreasing our inhibitions. And it kind of creates the perfect storm for like overeating plus having empty calories. And you know, you factor all that into it also affecting your sleep. You're probably gonna have some weight gain if you're drinking a decent amount. Therefore, choosing to drink less alcohol means weight loss, means potentially less stress on the joints. So guys, those were my findings when I went into a deep dive trying to learn why alcohol might correlate to joint health and how drinking less alcohol can play in favor of having better, healthier joints in the long run. But I do wanna answer a question that I'm sure somebody's gonna be wondering while they're watching this, and that question is how much alcohol is too much alcohol? Where is that line? What is the line of like it being very inflammatory versus being something that you can kind of go underneath the radar and not really affect you in that way. And I'm sorry to say there's not a super clear cut answer on that, but I can give you a few things. So the US standard for like low risk drinking quantities is no more than five drinks per week for women and no more than 10 drinks per week for men. However, that still is very high. The Canadian standards is no more than two drinks period. Uh, during the week and that's very different. But I will say for most of the studies referenced in this video that I made, the standard was that five to 10 ratio for men and women, um, where any drinking above that amount weekly was when you'd start to see these um, deleterious effects on joint health. However, that is a generalization across a large population you have to take into effect individual considerations too in genetics. And this is when you really have to take your own individual biology and genetic makeup into account when you are trying to answer this question. So for me, I'm pretty much sure that my body feels best on one to two 
no more than two drinks per week. And that might be different for somebody else. I'm curious about you guys though. What do you think? What's your kind of drink count for where your body starts to not feel so hot, especially if you're an athlete, do you even drink? I'd love to hear a little bit more about like your relationship to alcohol and what you notice in your body down in the comments below. All right, you guys, well, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, I greatly appreciate it and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.